Here I have four inverter stick welders ranging in price from just over a hundred bucks to the better part of a grand. Why can you buy six and a half of these for the price of one of these? It seems like they all do the same thing. We're going to dig into it today, not to determine necessarily which one of these is better. Generally more expensive tools are better, but just to determine, are they better enough to be worth it for you? First of all, we're looking at the Deco Pro here. It's the least expensive in the line, a simple 160 amp machine available from Amazon for $129. Next in line is the Titanium Stick 225, which leads the pack in terms of amperage. It's sold at Harbor Freight for $319, though it's often on sale. Who pays full price at Harbor Freight? Coming in at $499 is the HTP InverArc 160 Plus, which is sold online. And like the previous two, it's simple with a single knob adjustment, though this one has a TIG mode, which we won't dig into today. Last, but certainly not at least we'll look at the ESOB Rogue 180i available from welding supply stores for $849. It boasts several really nice features that the other machines don't have including adjustable hot start and arc force as well as special modes for 6010 electrodes and TIG welding. And the most obvious difference here is the range in output amperages from 160 amps up to 225. Now for me I don't see that as much of a differentiator because any of these have enough amperage to run a 1 8 inch 7018. This is the highest amperage electrode that I regularly use and I assume it meets the needs of most people. Well it seems like that's a good starting point so let's try each of these machines out with a 1 8 inch 7018 running 120 amps. The Deco Pro is running hot and smooth, no issues here. I've run this machine quite a bit and it hasn't missed a beat for me. The weld bead came out pretty slick for a YouTuber on a cheap machine too. Here's the Titanium Stick 225 running the same T-joint. It also worked really well. Once again, the bead is not too bad, certainly good enough for anything I do. The HTP looks similar, but feels like it's running slightly hotter than the previous two. It had a nice smooth arc, gave a similarly good result. The ESOB settled into a similar groove, running really well along the joint. Once again, I'm really happy with the result. Putting them all together, it's difficult to distinguish the difference between the machines, at least in this situation. They're all capable of getting the job done. All right, well, we have a lot more to look at with these machines, but before we do, I'm gonna take a few seconds and just let you know about something that could help you out quite a bit if you are just learning how to weld. I just released a set of online welding courses where I walk through the process of learning one small step at a time to reduce the amount of frustration and hassle that it takes to learn how to weld. So I'll link that in the description. Be sure to check it out if you think it could help you. Now let's get back into the machines. Another hot topic when it comes to inverter welders is whether they'll run a 6010 electrode or not. I don't know why so many people are concerned with this unless you're running something special like open root pipe. A 6011 usually works fine, but since it's a common question, Question, let's try it out. I'm going to run a 1 8 inch 6010 at 90 amps with a very basic whip and pause movement. When running a 6010, the Deco Pro doesn't sustain the arc very well. It tended to go out pretty easily. With the Titanium, I was surprised to see how well the Harbor Freight machine was able to run a 6010. It was definitely better than I expected. The HTP ran at no problem, definitely not an issue for this machine, and like the last test, it felt slightly hotter than the other two we've run so far. On the ESOB, I used the special 6010 mode, which worked flawlessly to sustain the arc during welding. Now three out of the four machines were able to run that 6010 pretty well. And any of these machines would work if you're trying to get extra practice in while you're going to welding school or if you're welding, you know, because you like a 6010 or even some open root work. But if I were welding open root pipe all the time, I'd definitely want the adjustable arc force and the dedicated 6010 mode you have on this highest end machine. Now these are all dual voltage machines, so they're run on 120 or 240 volt outlets. So far, all of our welding has been done on 240 volts. Let's plug them into 120 and see what happens. I'm going to run 3 seconds of an inch 7018 electrode with the machine setting of 80 amps for this test. Now the Deco Pro easily struck an arc and welded smoothly, though it felt a little cold for the setting. Now in the past I've noticed that this machine actually outputs a little bit lower amperage than what it reads when it's plugged into 120 volts, so I could turn it up a little bit and I think get a little more heat out of this. Next up is the Titanium, which it turns out it maxes out at 70 amps when running on 120 volts, so I had to go with that setting. It's running really well, almost identical to the Deco Pro. The HDP is running great at 80 amps, and I can tell that it's once again running a little hotter than the last two machines. 
Last up, the ESOB is running smoothly also. It feels very similar to the HTP. You can see the mill scale peeling up, which would be best to remove in practice, but for this test, I'm just welding right over it. Now let's look at the weld beads we created. They all look quite similar to one another, and all of these were able to run pretty well on 120 volts. So far, we haven't seen a whole lot to set these machines apart from one another. Let's take a quick look at the build quality. Now, I'm not gonna open them up and try to do some electrical engineering uh, analysis here. Um, I'm just looking from a user's perspective, and they all have a steel case with plastic on the front and back, and they all seem to be fairly well made. Each one came with 10 foot long leads that are six gauge cable, except for the HTP, which has a 15 foot long lead on the stinger end, and that little bit of extra length could be real nice. Now, while we're on the topic of welding leads, all of them used actual welding lead cable, except for the Deco Pro. The cables on that weren't quite as flexible, and they definitely don't seem like they'll hold up quite as long. Now, the electrode holders on the end of them, on the Deco Pro and the Titanium, they're pretty cheap but on the HTP and ESOB both of them had similar electrode holders uh, that seem pretty good the HTP is the only one that comes with its own carrying case now as far as warranties are concerned I couldn't find any information for the Deco Pro. Harbor Freight's got your back for 90 days unless you buy the upgraded policy. I've never bought one of those. And HTP and ESOB, they both stand behind their products for a full three years. All right, so what can we make of all this messing around? You know, all of them seem to do the same job. And you know, there were certain things that worked a little bit better on the higher end ones than the others but really not a whole lot. That being said, I do think that the nicer machines, the more expensive ones will hold up longer, but I could be wrong. These ones might outlast them 10 to one because none of them have died on me. So I can't say from that perspective, but what I can say from my own experience is if I had waited until I could afford the highest end tools, I never would have even gotten started. So I started with cheap stuff and worked my way up. That worked for me. On the other hand, I've never regretted buying a really good tool as a principal. So I think that the, the moral of the story here is don't feel like you need to buy the best, but if you can or if it makes sense for you, uh, go ahead and do it and uh, you're unlikely to regret it. Well, I had fun messing with these little machines. Hopefully you had fun too. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.